Hi everyone. First of all, I want to welcome the many new subscribers I've gained in the last week. Thank you so much for subscribing. I'll continue to upload all new Westlife performances as quickly as I can after the air, and you may also like the old videos I've uploaded from my VHS tapes dating back to March 1999 when I became a fan. My Sunday uploads are from my Westlife Memories series, so I'll link the playlist above to let you catch up. It's now January 2001, and we weren't sure if the Westlife lads would be back in London before the tour started. But while out celebrating my 20th birthday, my friends and I heard they were flying in from Ireland. I showed great restraint in not going to the hotel there and then, but the following night we went. I think Shane and Keen arrived first, but were quite moody. Though when asked about the rumour circulating that Nicky had pierced his nose, Shane replied sarcastically, Oh yeah, and his bell end. How schnicky is that? When Nicky and Mark got back, they were in much better moods. Nicky was debuting his spiky hairdo, but no nose piercing, and gave us all hugs. Mark was talking to some fans a bit away from me, and my friend whispered to him, It's Claire's birthday. The next thing I know, he came over, hugged me, and wished me a happy birthday, which I fangirled over big time, as kind of indicated he knew my name at last. We also had this photo, which sadly got ruined when the film was stuck, and I had to open the camera. You digital era fans won't know the pain of that. And spoiler alert, this turned out to be the last photo I had with Mark for over 14 years. The next day they filmed the Uptown Girl video minutes from where I lived at the time. I would have nailed that Claudia Schiffer part if they'd only asked, lol. My friends managed to get me a 12th row ticket for the first night of the tour in Newcastle, so I was soon convinced to join them, though it meant missing a couple of days of uni. I don't have any photos from that gig, so the ones I'm sharing here are from the Wembley dates where I was close to the front. It was a long journey up there, during which we prepared our dream set list featuring I Don't Wanna Fight, Moments and Close, none of which we ever got to hear. Unfortunately, our budget hadn't quite extended to the lads' hotel this time, plus it was fully booked, as plenty of fans were on tour with them. I hadn't realised that would happen, and will admit that after having Westlife in London so much up until then, I found it quite difficult that I was stuck there without the finances or time available to follow them as these girls were doing. On the day of the concert, we headed back to the Malmaison to see Westlife leave, and there were loads of girls outside, so there wasn't a hope that they were going to stop. But when they came out one by one, and the others just stared straight ahead and got on the tour bus, Mark, who had shaved his head again, caught my eye and smiled at me. Unfortunately, that was the last recognition I was to get for several months, because during the tour he was concentrating so hard on his dance moves that he rarely made eye contact with any members of the audience. There was one funny glitch on the first night. So as you'll know if you attended this tour or watched the recording, the lads are revealed to the audience when the towers they are in are automatically turned around. Except Keynes didn't move, and in the end several beefy stagehands had to come on and push it manually. It was a great concert, though I still think they focused a bit too much on dancing and sometimes their vocals suffered. Then it was back to reality for me until they came back to London for the Brits. But I had various disastrous crave attempts and didn't end up seeing them. I was eagerly awaiting their return to London for the Wembley gigs, so on that day I was at the Conrad bright and early, in the freezing cold, waiting for them to arrive. I will never forget how it made me feel when they all got off the tour bus and walked straight into the hotel without even saying hello. Mark was last, and I was expecting that as usual he would make the trip seem worthwhile. So it was devastating to me when he was as bad as all the others and just ignored the fans. I vowed that was it. I wasn't following them again. I would still go to the concerts but I was done with craving. Westlife at least. Obviously I had to get my Irish man fix elsewhere, so this is when I started going to see real. These are my favourite photos with Phil, Colin, Joe, Matt and Gary over the year or so they attempted to follow in Westlife's footsteps as the next hit Irish band. As you can see, things were a bit different with them. There was no freezing my butt off, as we usually sat drinking with them in their hotel bars, so it was a nice change from the Westlife madness. Anyway, back to Westlife. I originally didn't have a ticket to the first Wembley night, so had to get one from a tout. I managed to snag a tenth row minutes before the gig, and think I actually paid less than face value. 
I actually had one of my most memorable moments of the tour at that gig. I wasn't expecting any recognition with being so far back, so you can imagine my surprise when Shane pointed right at me. I know I met them a lot, but I always thought I was too shy to be one of the memorable fans, so I remember looking all around to see if it was someone else he was pointing at, and him laughing at me and waving. Definitely my favourite moment was Mr Filan. The next two nights I had second and third row tickets, so an amazing view. And finally, by the third Wembley concert, Mark was becoming more comfortable on stage and smilier, though I don't remember now if any of those smiles were in my direction. That was also the night another fan was throwing sweets for Brian to catch in his mouth, which was very amusing. So I'll leave it there and cover the Dublin concert and my last concert of the tour in next week's instalment. Thanks for watching and bye for now.